And here we are for the long-awaited shelfie. It took me ages to get around to doing this, mainly because my office has been like a bomb site for quite some time now. So I thought today it's a nice Sunday afternoon. I'd give you a look at some of the books I've got. There's nothing massively special in there, but I do have a couple of really nice reference books that I'm sure some of you will be interested in. So let's have a look. Okay, so top shelf is usually where fiction lives. There has been a slight upset in the order of things over the last year or so because I've acquired a lot of new books, some of which belong to my father, some of which belong to my grandmother, and I tend to just accumulate books from people in general. So this is a look at my bottom shelf, which is roughly more kind of reference based. Um, you know, there's some things I'm not hugely proud of in there too. I'm looking at you, Bear Grylls. I don't know, I hang on to it because I'm fully sure there might be some useful survival skills in there, but I really don't know. And this is a lovely book of the Brothers Grimm Tales. Illustrated works, very, very nice. I've had that since I was a little girl. Uh, there's a couple there actually I've had since I was a little girl like supernatural stories and Anne Rice got me through my teens as well as Pratchett who has his own whole section over here. Sorry my battery died there. I was on a very long interview last night and I was so buzzed whenever it was over that I just got up and walked out of the office and just more or less left everything on but the lights. So it's okay, we're sorted now. And back to back to the reference books now, because like I said, I have some gems in there and books that I'm always recommending to people. So we'll start at this end. This is Culpepper's Herbal. So, you know, if you're at all into herbs, you've probably heard of Culpepper. Nicholas Culpepper was his name. He's a Victorian English guy who wrote down, I think he was Victorian, actually I'm not 100% sure on that, but he basically documented all the uses of um, herbs in England in folk remedies uh, at the time. It's full of lovely illustrations like that, just to really help you to identify the herbs that you're working with. I mean, you know, it's, it's, it's outdated in a way, you know, we've, we have moved on a little bit kind of from the things, the kinds of things that people were trying to cure with herbs and the ways they were trying to cure them back in Culpepper's time. But at the same time, it is still a really, really useful reference. And it's great even just, you know, to, to find out about things that are growing around you. Uh, beyond that, I've got books by Mark Boyle. So I've got The Moneyless Man and... The Moneyless Manifesto over here. Mark Boyle, good friend of mine. Uh, he lived without money for three years, I believe it was. And just fascinating, you know. Moneyless living would be something I'd be quite interested in myself. I helped him do some building work on his happy pig. I thought I'd just stick my face in while I'm doing so much yapping. So, yeah, I helped him do some natural building with cob mainly so that's straw and mud mixed so natural building techniques i'm not too sure about whether the techniques we were using are sort of indigenous to ireland i'm sure you know in a way they were using the same principles that we were but natural building is something that i'm very very interested in and i'd really love to if not build my own house sometime I'd, I'd certainly love to at least use a mixture of old and natural building methods to maybe renovate a little cottage or something but anyway that's way on into the future but just in case you see books like the house builder's bible and that kind of thing that is why this here i need to show you This is like the modern version of Culpepper. John Lust, now he was an American guy, but we do have a lot of wildflowers in common. And I highly recommend getting yourself a copy of this book. I still use this all the time uh, to find out whatever I need to know about different herbs. And I have so many wild and wacky books in here. You know, like 
people give me boxes of books from the 70s and things like I've never really actually looked at this book we might dip into that at some point next down the line we have Lady Gregory I mean she's nice to read but please don't base all your knowledge of Irish mythology on what Lady Gregory says she's just not top of the list of most reliable sources Carl Jung a favorite of mine he just nailed so many things on the head I think it's really ahead of his time and this one we've got wild Irish plants myths legends and folklore by Niall McQuither now this is a brilliant book okay this is this really has everything would highly recommend it also has all of the you know the drawings to help you identify it's got really in-depth information and it even has Irish language folklore in it too which is just lovely um original watercolors by Grania Langrisha so yeah that's a beautiful book and that is a must-have if you're into foraging and herbs or even just the myths and folklore surrounding them yeah the charmed garden we've got from Findhorn press it's it's not awful well it's not great okay i wouldn't recommend this for people starting out it's not the best source but, you know, you can see that there was at least some research put into writing it. But, you know, it's got fun ideas for different ways to make witchy gardens. Learning Irish by Michal O'Shiel. We've got Monaghan Folk Tales by my friend Steve Lally. Excellent storyteller. We've got some Laura O'Brien in here. That was my first connection with an Irish witch who was actually practicing Irish witchcraft. I'd read a lot of nonsense before that, being quite honest. Did also pick up this random, really old book and probably paid way too much for it in an antique shop some years back uh, by St. John D. Seymour. I mean, it's okay. It's a good read. It's got some interesting stories in it, but Again, it doesn't really tell you the whole story, you know? Irish of the Arctic. This was one of my dad's books. Look at that. How cool is that? I can't wait to read that, actually. Chinese zodiac signs. Okay, I'm not massive into astrology. And I don't know. I feel a bit more like a Virgo than a Libra some of the time. But yet and all, I picked this up for a quid in a charity shop many years ago. And I have to say it. Bang on the money, 95% of the time. So that's by, um, a, I believe it can still be got on the internet relatively cheap. Original text en français in French by Catherine Aubier. So, you know, if you're into astrology, I'd recommend. Also, duct tape to hold your books together yeah tell you another one that could be doing with some duct tape is this oldie one over here again picked it up very very cheap it is 15 plays of shakespeare i believe it's about a hundred years old but look you've got a lovely it belonged to johnny rice and it was given on the 8th of september 1932 this beautiful handwriting you know, I, I I pretty much bought the book for the signature inside it. It's quite old, but it's very decrepit. And I won't lie, I do occasionally use it to prop up table lamps when I need extra lights. Don't at me, okay? Gotta make do what you got. Ireland's Immortals, right, okay. If you want to know about mythology, I haven't dug into this yet, but it comes highly recommended by the people who I respect when it comes to Irish mythology. So Mark Williams, this is only, I think this book was only released last year. I got a copy of it for Christmas and I actually cannot wait to get stuck into that. I've also got a lovely book of Old Dog here by Victor Whitmarsh, which I regularly reference for my videos. We've got Anthony Murphy, Mythical Ireland hiding in here. 
Hi Anthony, if you're watching and you should check out Anthony's channel too, Mythical Ireland. It's an absolutely amazing place for community and also for resources on ancient Irish culture and mythology. Oh yes, this here, this book is amazing. Forest Fungi in Ireland. The information was collated by students from GMIT, so that's Galway Mayo Institute of Technology, and students from NUIG, the National University of Ireland, Galway. And it, it's the definitive book if you're going into forests in Ireland to pick mushrooms. This is the one, it tells you, first of all, the poisonous mushrooms, and then the mushrooms best avoided. And then edible mushrooms. It's got some great information on preserving mushrooms and great tips for picking as well. It can be quite hard to get, but if you do go looking for this and you're unable to find a copy of it, you can actually contact one of these two guys here. Professor Paul Dowding and I presume Louis Smith is a professor too, but I actually emailed Professor Paul Dowding. I lost my original copy of this and I emailed him to get the second one. So if you're having a hard time digging up a copy, then I would highly recommend dropping him an email. He's a very nice guy. And of course he wants as many people as possible to read his book. And one more hiding down the end here that I've got, the Inneskeen story. I've been using this for a video, which I am putting out on Thursday, a great conversation about the history of Inneskeen County Monaghan as a centre for traditional arts right back as far as ancient times so don't miss that. I'm talking to my friend Senna McGee and we had a great conversation. So you can see that I have got more books up and over there but it's just the space in front of it is a little bit congested at the minute. You can see all my seedlings there so everything's kind of shoved into the corner. But I'll show you up there another time. It's mainly dictionaries and Pratchett and copies of my own novels and a few more reference books. We'll save those for another day. So that's about it. I hope you enjoyed this little tour of my bookshelves now that you can actually see them. As I say, tune in for that on Thursday. It's going to be an amazing chat. It was an amazing chat. It's really kind of lifting the lid on an area of Irish history around here that really isn't discussed too often and I really think it's only the beginning of something possibly a lot bigger. So stay tuned for that. Slán agus goodbye and good luck to you.